Good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are joining me for the very first time, my name is Dahlia, and I have been sharing from the amazing book of John. So I hope you can, you know, continue on this journey with me. If you are joining me for the first time and you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to the channel. Also like and share the video so that others can hear the word of God. On this channel, I post on Mondays and on Fridays. I post a lesson on Monday and through the rest of the week, you can read the, the chapter and read the lesson. And on Friday is prayer time Friday. And so... I invite you to subscribe, comment about the lesson, share your testimony, and just follow along with the lesson. We are doing an overview of the book of John. So again, we're doing an overview. So we're not going to get too into the nitty gritty, but where we can stop and you can be enlightened, I will do that and present you the information. But then you have to go back and study it out and draw out all the revelation knowledge. You know, we will do our best to stop at the, you know, the pivotal stops. And so, and, and, and kind of like put that out there. But then when you go back and you study through, you will pull more out. But the overview is very important. So let's get into to it because we are in chapter four. Yes, we finished chapter three and we are in chapter four. Now, with the book of John, I am trying to stay in the content of the book and the context of the book. Now, there are times when I may give some references when it comes to the Holy Spirit, but I'm trying to wait because in the book of John, he talks about the Holy Spirit in depth and he introduces the Holy Spirit to us. So I don't want to get ahead of the lesson because where Jesus said over in chapter three, that you should be born again, chapter two and three, where he talks about being born again and for God so loved the world, but that you should be what born again, be born of the water and the spirit. I want to take you through the book of John, its content and context, and you'll see how John talks about the Holy Spirit and talks about being baptized and what it means. And you're going to see that. And so at times I may come in and I may talk about the Holy Spirit with other references, but again, it's an overview. So we're trying to stay in the content and the context of the book. Okay. And give you as much historical and cultural uh, background as I possibly can. So we are in chapter four. Let's get on into it. And I'm going to read a few verses and see how far we get, okay? So chapter 4, verse 1, it says this, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a, to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, or yes, yeah, Sychar, near the plot of the ground of Jacob's uh, gave that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, I just got through teaching the book of Genesis. You will know what this is and where this is. So, if you have not followed me on Instagram, please join me on Instagram, and you'll see because we just got through studying the book of Genesis. In verse six, it says, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me to drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And I want to pause there for a minute because we need to talk about that. So we see here, Jesus was on his way to Galilee. And Jesus said, I have need to go through Samaria. So even though he's on his way to Galilee, he calculated his journey and he says, wait a minute, I need to go through Samaria, which means that Jesus, he's, he's Lord, he's God. So he knew 
that there was work to be done and that there was a soul waiting for him there. And so if you know anything about Samaria geographically, it was the shortest route to Galilee. But because the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along by, you can see by her response to him in verse nine, they did not get along. And so here, let's talk about that a little bit before we move on. So in the first couple of verses, we see John talked about that, you know, the Pharisee heard that he was baptizing and all this stuff. And they, you know, they were talking about the baptism and Jesus says he himself did not baptize, but his disciples. And again, we touched on baptizing as a demonstration of repentance and cleansing in preparation for the Messiah who was Jesus. Okay, so we talked about baptism, that the washing of the waters, the cleansing away, and, and it prepares you now for the Messiah, the coming. You're in agreement with him. And so he sets out to go to Galilee, but he's specific. Now, remember, Jesus Christ is Lord. He, nothing happens by happenstance. Nothing happens by accident. He calculated and he knew that there was a work to be done in Samaria. So the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along. Now, from history, a historical connection here is that the people of Israel, when they came out of the Assyrian captivity, you know, again, they were not supposed to mix with the pagans. They were not supposed to mix with the pagans. And so they came to this city and you know, back in, I guess, 128 BC or whatever, you have them, the, the Samaritans, you know, they, they are a mixture or half breed of Jews and Assyrians. So they were a mix, but they were mixed with the Jewish um, nationality. And the Jews, according to the laws and according to the word of God, they were not supposed to mix with any Gentile nation. And so, of course, through disobedient, so they were half Jew, half Gentile, thus Samaritan, you know, they were like half breeds. That's what they refer to them. But because of the commands and the laws of Moses, they were not supposed to mix with them because they were pagan worshipers. They had superstition. They had various superstition. And so when you put that with the law of God and their superstitious ways and their paganistic ways, they cause a problem. They caused a problem. And so the Jews did not want, the religious Jews did not want to mix with them, did not want to, you know, socialize with them. So they would take the longer journey to Galilee because there's another route. But going through Samaria was a shorter journey, was a shorter, shorter geographically um, than the other route. And, but Jesus said, I have need to go through, which means that this was not you know, a, a nonchalant going through, but this was a purposeful going through. Jesus, everything he did was on purpose. Now let's talk about Jacob's well in the city of Sychar, because the city of Sychar, if you were with me, and again, if you, if you don't follow me on Instagram, go over on Instagram and follow me there, and you'll see where I taught in the book of Genesis. And the city of Sychar is the ancient city of Shechem, which is the capital city for the Samaritans. And this is the city where Abraham first came when he arrived into Canaan, from, um, 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 when he arrived from Babylon, from Babylonia. This is where Abraham uh, came. So again, it's the ancient city uh, called Shechem. And Shechem has a lot of history for the Jews. If you go over um, and it says this was where Jacob came when he returned with his wife. So Jacob, after that, Jacob then comes back again to this city in chapter 33, verse 18. All right. So this is not an unfamiliar city to the Jews. 
It's not unfamiliar. A lot of things happen in this area. And so he said, I have need to go there. And he talks about Jacob's well. So again, you know that back in Genesis, this was where Jacob came back. And this was where um, this established the connection with Jacob and what, you know, what we are now seeing as what Jacob's well there in Sychar, okay? So Sychar, again, was previously called Shechem. So that's a little um, bit of the historical background. And so again, the Jews were half breed. They were half Jewish and half pagan, half Assyrian, half Gentile. You know, any anybody who was not Jewish was referred to as the Gentiles. But if you go back into the study, it points back to the Assyrians, okay? So that's just a little bit of history right there. And so he went through and it says a woman of Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me to drink. Now, it talks about the hour because it says it was about the sixth hour and the hour is important because this meant it was around noontime and usually when the women go to the well the the they did not go alone and the women they had a particular time where they would draw their water and so they would come in groups and they would come together in the earlier part of the day where it wasn't too sunny where it wasn't too hot and if you know anything about what's um between the jews and the samaritans is that the jews did not speak to them now as a male, a rabbi, and a teacher, he should not be speaking or addressing a woman, period. They're not even supposed to be standing in the same area at the same time. So this story is important because Jesus is now tearing down these walls, these traditions. That's very important because the men is not the man is not supposed to speak to the woman publicly he's not supposed to speak to her and address her and even when they're with their wives they have to be very careful it's the law of moses so this was like an out of place scene and so the woman jesus comes to her and he says give me to drink for his disciples they had gone away to buy food and so this woman she knows the laws and she knows how the Jews are so her response was very strong and she broke it down because she wasn't just speaking because she was being rude but she knew that listen who is this man and why would he dare to ask me to give him to drink because he's not even supposed to speak to me he's not even supposed to be sitting near me or or in the same place at the same time what is he doing here at the well at this hour so she knows what the parameters are and she knows what the Jews are and so notice what she says she said to him how is it so now she poses a question to Jesus. She said, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask from me, a Samaritan woman? You see that? So she addressed him according to the social requirements and the social, you know, um, restrictions that were placed upon them from the laws of Moses. And she said, how is it that you, a Jew, is speaking to me, not only a Samaritan, but a Samaritan woman? And then she says, for the Jews, they have no dealings with the Samaritans. You see that? So they did not get along and they have no dealings. They don't fellowship. They don't talk to them. They don't do any form of exchange with them. 
That's how serious it was. So in this book, Jesus is now tearing down. He's trampling upon the traditions of man. And he's tearing down all of those cultural, you know, nuances that were set up. Because Jesus comes. And if you remember in chapter 2 and 3, he says, I did not come to what? Condemn the world, but through Jesus, the world might be saved. So he came for the world. And remember John 3, 16. So this is why I say we're staying in the content and context of the book. Because in John 3, 16, which is the foundation of the entire Bible and the, the foundation of Jesus Christ on a whole. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe, believe on him should not perish. She is a whosoever. And God loves the world. So when Jesus went and he went in a place and talked to this woman that it was forbidden for him to even speak to her. And he broke that tradition. He broke that rule and that social nuance. And he spoke to her and asked her to give him to drink. And so she said, you Jews have no dealings with me a Samaritan. So this lady, if you think about it, she has a very rambunctious character. You know, she is not afraid. She's a bold and strong woman. You know, she's like her own boss because she addressed him. She says, you are a Jew and you ask me, a Samaritan woman. So she was a strong and she knew who she was. And she did not hide or step back. But she, you know, she asked him this question. She stood up for herself because she was like, you have no business here. You have no dealings here. But again, if you go back to where Jesus um spoke he said i have need to go through samaria so it was a purposeful visit jesus was on purpose and remember i said that by tradition a rabbi would not speak to a woman publicly okay and so it was unusual for a jewish person at that time to ask and to take a cup from a woman and we're not even going to describe such a woman because as you get further into the text you're going to see what type of a woman she really is and so when you know and you're going to see when the disciples came back how shocked they were so we're going to stop right there and as you study, as you read and you go through, this is just an overview. When you go back and you study, you're going to pull out more. But Jesus was on purpose. Everywhere that Jesus went, whatever Jesus did in this book was on purpose. It's not by accident when he said, I have need to go through Samaria. Because God had a purpose. He was getting ready to tear down those traditions and break down those cultural differences. Because remember, John 3, 16, whosoever will believeth on him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. She is a whosoever. And so again, we're going to pull the book of John in its own content and context. And you're going to see how it blends out together. I have to stop here. My time is up, but come back. Because Jesus answers her and you're going to see his answer to her. And this answer, we want to stay there a little bit and break it apart. So come back because Jesus has an answer for her, this Samaritan woman. But just know and trust that whoever you are, whatever religion, whatever race, whatever country you're from, Jesus died for your sin. He died for the world. So you are not exempt and you are not excluded. Jesus died for you. And all you have to do is believe on him and everything, all of the blessings that comes under Jesus, when you accept him in your heart, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will get all these blessings. You will have everlasting life. Jesus did not come for a specific race of people. 
And that's what this does right here. It shows you that he came for everyone, the world. So he tear down all these barriers, all these racism. He tore it down by speaking to her. And that's why Jesus God says, for God so loved the world. Jesus came to save the world, not to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. You see, and those who are condemned, back in chapter 3, he says, men love darkness. And those who are condemned are the ones who choose, choose not to believe on him. So we're going to stop right here with this Samaritan lady and we're going to get back to Jesus when he answers her. Yes, he's going to answer her. So come on back. So remember, we are in John chapter four. Come on back and we're going to continue with Jesus's response. So thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel and come back for the other piece of this response from Jesus. Go with God and continue to be a blessing because you are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you for watching.